The sun was peeking over the horizon when I stepped into the living room. An inch-thick glass wall was all that separated me from the wonders and dangers of New Orleans. Out there, somewhere, was the portal to hell. But at the moment, I had greater things to worry about. They came in the form of four dangerously seductive demons, who all happened to be waiting for me. You seem to be feeling better. Alistair smirked from across the room. He sat shirtless, leaving the blue brand across his abdomen on display. His arm sprawled across the back of the long leather couch, where a vacant seat was waiting between him and Ryston. Damn him. He was no better than Laron. They both got far too much enjoyment out of this for the wrong reasons. On one hand, it made me want to throttle them. On the other, maybe Julian could use the prodding to make him sort through his shit. I am. Thanks for asking, I said, displaying a smirk of my own and crossing my arms over my chest. Instead of taking the waiting seat between them or the one beside Laurent, I veered straight for the single armchair. Bandit leapt on top of it, poising himself where he could simultaneously watch them and be petted. We need to discuss your transition, Julian said, turning away from the cityscape. Or more pertinently, how you would like to go about it. Both his arms were clasped behind his back. He wore dark pants and a fitted long sleeve shirt, despite the New Orleans heat. Then again, maybe it was just me burning up, given how high the air conditioner was jacked. His jaw tensed, waiting for my answer. The picture of utter control. Um, I drawled out. I don't know. Considering no one ever thought I would transition, I didn't pay all that much attention to the house mothers at the orphanage. My voice trailed off at the look he and Ryston were sharing. Alistair sighed deeply, and even Laron looked a bit uncomfortable. You have no idea what the transition entails, Julian asked slowly. I shook my head. Not really. Theoretically, I know that I might gain some cool powers and I'll stop aging. As for how? I shrugged. Like I said, I never thought I would. The room seemed to let out an audible sigh of frustration. Clearly, the horseman had expected more than that, expected more of me. It's not like I signed up for this job, though. I had no idea until they showed up on my doorstep to drop the news. The awkward silence made me tense, and I looked away as Moira came to sit on the other arm of my wide chair, throwing her arm around me. She smelled a bit like sweat and booze. Great. It might be a bit easier, love, if we started with your questions and worked from there, Ryston suggested. His lips quirked up in an encouraging smile. Well, I started when Moira decided to cut in. Let's start with you four hobos. Did she really just call them that? Yep, yes, she did. <laughs>